Good morning. This is a response video to those out there who have objections to uh, the details of my spirit level flight experiment. It's uh, another rebuttal video. Thus far I've showed that a plane flies over a level surface. Another thing that I was told after the experiment was to simply look out of the window to view curvature from the aircraft. So I took you on a flight where we looked out of the window the whole time. During that flight, there was no observable curvature to be seen. According to the heliocentric model, the spinning ball Earth, we're told that at the equator, the Earth is spinning at 1,032 miles per hour eastward. Now because the United States is a little higher in latitude from the equator, let's say that the speed slows down to about 850 miles per hour. Now I was on a plane heading from the east coast to the west coast at 515 miles per hour. The cruising altitude anyway, or cruising speed is 515 miles per hour on an A321 Airbus. The max speed is 545 miles per hour according to online specs for that particular aircraft. Now given those numbers, I conclude that an east coast to west coast flight should be a physical impossibility. Now why do I say that? Well, for example, and I'll just use this to make things simple. The plane is only going 515 miles per hour. The ground beneath the plane is moving at 850 miles per hour. Therefore, the ground is always outpacing the plane over 300 miles per hour. So, being able to fly from the east coast to the west coast, that, that should never happen. But what happens? Well, people book their flights, they get on the planes on the east coast and they fly to the west coast with no problem. Planes go from the west coast to the east coast, generally the same amount of time. A flight from Seattle to Texas, Houston that is, takes roughly three and a half hours both ways. From going to, from Houston to Seattle, about three and a half hours. From Seattle to Houston, about three and a half hours. Now, if the ground were spinning beneath us, that shouldn't happen. That should never happen, if you think about it. And that's all I want you to do. Just consider these things. Because this is pretty common sense stuff. And what does happen? Just that. Everybody makes their flights on time. And the times are always right around the same, going both ways. Almost as if we live on a flat, stationary Earth. Because that's what it is. Now, before we get into this next part, Let's listen to a pilot's testimony. I was an airline pilot for Delta for 26 years. A pilot's primary flight instrument is his artificial horizon, which he has to be maintained level to keep from climbing and descending. From the cockpit, weather permitting, I could see hundreds of miles in all directions, viewing cities connected by roads across the flat plain as far as the eye could see. All right, so now number two, what should have happened on the spirit level flight experiment. According to the heliocentric model concerning spherical trigonometry, the curvature of the Earth is calculated at eight inches per mile squared. Now, in my experiment, if you've seen, seen that already, I'll post a link in the description. I traveled 203 miles recording level flight during that 203 miles, according to curvature math or spherical trigonometry, the plane should have had to compensate for five miles of curvature going downward. But while explaining that, uh, it seems that some people uh, misinterpreted what I was saying. Uh, in my head, I didn't go through each step. Actually, I'll admit it, I skipped a step. So here, let me, let me, let me grab my model. Now, 
what I showed you was level flight for 203 miles. Bubble stayed centered the whole time. Generally the whole time. Now, had the plane been dipping the nose forward, the bubble would have ended up towards the back of the spirit level, like so. But that's not what happened. What I showed in the flight was that the level stayed flush pretty much for the entire 203 miles. Now, even so, it showed that the plane was flying generally level. Because the plane was independent of the Earth's surface during that flight, that means in order to maintain altitude of 34,000 feet, which is what I was told, which is what we were told on the plane, 34,000 feet was the cruising altitude. So in order to maintain that, while flying level, the only way that the plane would have maintained that altitude while the Earth's surface was curving beneath it would be to de decrease velocity and thus cause the airplane to slowly sink in order to maintain that altitude while the Earth is still curving beneath it. Now, let's say that is what happened and the plane was just flying level and it was just decreasing altitude or just flying at a speed that would constantly compensate for the curvature of the Earth beneath. Yet and still, even at the end of that, even at the end of that, at the end of that 203 miles per miles, the plane still would have had to compensate for curvature because you see the plane was still independent of the surface of the Earth. So the plane was flying level, but the ground beneath, according to the heliocentric model, the ground was still curving beneath the airplane. So the plane's flying level and the ground's still curving beneath. So at some point, in order to get proper orientation back to the ground, the plane would have had to take a dive or dip the nose, as I say. But that didn't happen, and you saw that. So one of two things was supposed to happen. Either the plane was supposed to fly off into space because it was just flying level the whole time and it would have gained too much altitude because the ground is still curving beneath it, right? Or the plane was just flying over a level surface the entire time, which it pretty much shows that the Earth is flat. Mosquitoes. surface is sloping at an exponential rate while the plane is flying just like that now I know before this experiment even starts that the plane does not dip its nose forward I know that during takeoff the plane dips the nose upward tips upward tilts the nose upward then it flies nice and level at cruising altitude maintains an altitude over a flat surface air we're in the air flying over a plane and then decreases velocity when we get closer to the airport then we land deploy the landing gear wheels come out bottom wheels hit front wheels and we're back at the terminal that's how a flight goes the plane never dips its nose forward I know it you know it and that's what happens the plane just flies level the whole time because we're flying over a flat stationary earth and there's the proof be sure to like and subscribe, comment as you see fit, be sure to link up with me and the crew over at Flat Earth No Trolls or The Future of Flat Earth, you can link up over there. Find me on Twitter, at DMarble1, thanks for tuning in, I'll see you in the next video. A scientist is a person engaging in a systematic activity to acquire knowledge that describes and predicts the natural world. In a more restricted sense, a scientist may refer to an individual who uses the scientific method. Forget what you think you know about science. Science does not belong solely to a bunch of old guys in lab coats. I don't care what any meathead shill says. Any, any celebrity or anybody that feels like they have intellectual superiority over you. Whether you've done eight years of schooling or zero years of schooling. Anybody can be a scientist. Even you. I want you to believe in yourself because I believe in you. So as always, be kind to each other, take care, and stay flat.